subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates uh, let me begin with something which you alluded to but didn't quite uh, develop uh, now this is upcoming uh, presidential elections in the usa which are you know less than 2 uh, weeks away uh, you mentioned that uh, president trump's china policy has bipartisan support uh, though there are you no know, of course differences on on uh, details and tactics uh, what kind of differences in the security and defense strategies uh, uh, do you envisage uh, between a trump and biden administration i am not trying to speculate on what will happen on 3rd november in the usa but if there is change in administration what kind of major differences or changes do you envisage on the question of what a Biden administration Trump administration defense uh, policy would be with especially with respect to China but I could first though uh, just make clear how much bipartisan support there is uh, for the general direction of the Trump administration with respect to China at least saying that uh, perhaps the Trump administration is the one that sounded the uh, toxin um first within the executive branch the i had talked very briefly in the world of economic exchange and technology competition the sweeping uh sets of rules regulations that have been put in place uh, and they go as well into law enforcement so you have now Three and a half years, almost four years into the Trump administration. If you go into the Department of Defense, of course, they have their sets of rules and regulations that didn't exist with regard to exchange with China. The Department of State, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Treasury, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So even if you had a Biden administration that came in that said we really want to have a major change quickly and and uh, go in a very different direction, which you will not. it would be very difficult for them to do second point is that of course the trump administration wasn't acting on its own many times what gets reported as the trump administration has rolled out this new policy was in fact in response to a congressional act or congressional mandate i think you all would find this interesting if you look at congressional us congressional legislation that names china now this could be resolutions or bills we're currently in the what we call the 116th congress of the united states 2019 to january of next year we aren't done yet there were 567 resolutions and bills introduced in this congress in two years that names china to give you, to put that number in some kind of context 567 in one in the 107th congress 2001 to 2003 the first years of the so called global war on terror 135 so 135 now we're at 567 some of the resolutions and bills uh, there's the south china sea and east china sea sanctions act of 2019 there's the fair trade with china enforcement act there's preventing china from explo- exploiting covid-19 act the countering the chinese government and communist party's political influence operations act a resolution condemning the persecution of christians in china and uh brace yourself for this one a bill to prohibit the use of federal funds for purchasing dogs and cats from wet markets in china and for other purposes um and if you go into the polling whether it's republican or democrat you get the same result but a lot of bipartisan actions going on in congress the only bipartisan actions with regard to china policy and the last point is is this an elite issue in washington dc as often foreign policy issues can be the answer is no pew survey um uh, our pew uh, surveys are conducted in the united states and around the world and a pretty good barometer of us opinion at least the unfavorable views of china in the year 2005 
in the United States was 35 percent. 35 Ameri- 35 percent of Americans polled in 2005 had an unfavorable view of China. In this year of 2020, 73 percent. But also, let me point out that this isn't just the United States that has seen this trend. That same comparison, about 2005 to 2020, unfavorable views. Australia, 40 to 81 percent. Japan, 42 to 86 percent. Korea, 24 to 75 percent. Germany, 25 to 71 percent. And get this again, brace yourself. Even Sweden is angry, 14 percent to 85 percent. Now, to get to though to the question of how would we, what policies would we see change? Um, I think that under a uh, Biden administration, we'll see less defense spending, but with regard to China, that probably won't matter. I think there'll be a tendency to, under a Biden administration, to try to draw down as the Obama administration tried to do, and truly the Trump administration tried to do, is to draw down in the Middle East and Central Asia, uh, uncertain what they'll do in Europe because of concerns with Russia, but a more doubling down in the Western Pacific, in the Indo-Pacific area. What you'll see from a Biden administration that would be quite different from a Trump administration. First of all, much more emphasis on allies and partners. Now, I think that the Trump administration has gotten too much criticism in the Indo-Pacific area for uh, disunity or uh, not linking economic and security policies. Uh, I think that that uh, guilty is charged in Europe to some extent in Asia, but perhaps the argument is overstated. Regardless, globally, you'll see a Biden administration which tries to uh, reinforce and reinvigorate alliances and partnerships and will better synchronize economic and security policies. So as an example, not going after a key ally, which we'd look at is very important in creating a more united front with regard to China, not going after them separately in a, a, some kind of trade war. You'll also see with the Biden administration a return to a much more transparent and coherent bureaucratic process. And I think in a good way. Um, in Washington, D.C., I think most would agree right now that our national security decision making process is a bit incoherent and unpredictable and subject to uh, daily tweets. I think that uh, finally you'll see from a Biden administration an effort being made to uh, see if there's areas that China and the United States can possibly cooperate in. So uh, perhaps in uh, fighting uh, pandemic threats, uh, certainly in the area of climate change, but very but being very clear eyed. And the term that's developed under the Trump administration of China as a strategic competitor, the Biden administration will uh, continue that.